and I'm going to speak from behind my laptop because I'm the post PowerPoint generation and <laughs> try to incorporate some of the comments we actually had in, in um, the earlier days session. Um, so, you know, my first comments are perhaps because the internet developed and evolved so rapidly over the past ten, uh, sorry, over the past ten years um, that it still feels very new to many people, including the majority of its end users. Yet, obviously, we're here today celebrating the fact that the domain name system is 25 years old. Um, and I just want to point out that for the rest of my speech, when I talk speech, when I talk about DNS, I'm actually talking about it as a fundamental technology. I'm not actually referring to um, the domain name industry. Um, there are other speakers later on in the panel that will actually address that. So the Internet Society, or ISOC, is in its 16th year. And from the beginning, ISOCs recognized the value and actively supported the continuation of a global, stable domain name system. It is central to the healthy functioning of the Internet. We also believe that the collaborative model that has brought the Internet so far um, should be uh, continued and advanced in any future developments. And in that context, I mean the activities and processes of things such as the IETF, Internet Engineering Task Force, the Internet Architecture Board, which is the IAB, regional internet registries, and many other um, policy and technical forums that have actually developed over the last 30 years. Um, and many of you know the origins of the DNS were quite straightforward. Um, it was simply to develop a system that could simply and automatically translate IP addresses to more recognizable host names. Um, as an aside, I'll just point out that work on the DNS and related technical standards such as DNSSEC continue to this day um, in the IETF and, and they are developed through open processes. Um, much of the internet community works in a, in a multi-stakeholder, open community, transparent process model. Um, so I know a lot of people like to believe that this only came about recently through WISIS, WIGI, and internet governance forums discussions, but in fact it's been at the heart of everything the technical community has done with respect to the internet's development since day one. Um, I'll come back to the DNS now. So the 25-year history of the DNS actually provides an interesting case in the challenges the Internet has faced and, and certainly will continue to face in light of its growth, commercialization, and, as we've just heard, politic politicization. So DNS led a relatively quiet existence from a public and political perspective for the first 10 years of its existence. Then in the early 1990s, the increase in the rapid commercial and public use of the Internet certainly impacted the DNS in ways that I can't imagine were imagined in three <coughs> when it was first introduced. These included, just amongst a few, disputes over rights to domain name strings stemming from commercial cyber squatting and other conflicts between trademark and domain name holders. Um, another factor was the increasingly lucrative domain name registration business, which is, you know, until the late 1990s was managed as a monopoly by a U.S. based company. Um, some of the other uh, factors were competitive and other demands to expand the top of the domain name space. And those certainly continue today and are very topical in, in the ICANN community. Um, and in some cases, individuals who are managing and operating CCTLDs were managing those in ways that weren't aligned with the local internet community. Um, the internet community, which includes again, at that point in time, the Internet Society, uh, the IAB, and IANA, recognized the need to develop new mechanisms and <coughs> to address the challenges and evolution of what was becoming a, um, a growing public, commercial, and clearly more political internet. So in 1996, ISOC, um, with other partners, convened the International Ad Hoc Committee, which was mentioned um, both in the earlier video. And I'm not sure if Paul mentioned it or not. Um, and that was an attempt to address issues um, which were resulting from debates about DNS management. <coughs> And while certain aspects and mechanics of the IHAC proposals proved to be untenable, many of those fundamental concepts, um, which were driven by ISOC and others in the IHAC, were adopted as pre key principles in the U.S. government white paper that ultimately led to the creation of ICANN. Some of those principles included the need to preserve universal routability and openness of the Internet, international open multi-stakeholder participation in DNS decision making, and again, reiterating that those principles have always been a part of the internet community and internet development, and the development of DNS management procedures, um, which were meant to be as simple, fair, and direct as possible, 
and that attempted to address what was seen at that time as a uh, rather narrow um, set of issues. It also um, focused on the development of a competitive registrar, registry model, and transparent process in the selection of new TLDs. So ISOC and many of the other internet um, community organizations have actually remained active in DNS discussions, and we've remained active as they've evolved over time and entered more of the political and governmental sphere. And there I'm talking about some of the WISIS, WIGI, and Internet Governance Forum activities. With respect to our participation and position on ICANN, um, we continue to espouse the fundamental principles guided by our initial participation and strongly support the ICANN model. Um, I mentioned earlier that issues that face the DNS are indicative of the challenges the Internet has faced, will continue to face in light of its rapid growth. And I'd like to just expand on that um, quickly. We see many of the same issues and approaches that emerged during the early years of the DNS debates re-emerging in the areas of internationalized domain names, cybersecurity, unwanted traffic, to name a few. Um, some of the points of evidence for those are technological approaches inconsistent with the end-to-end -end concept of the Internet, such as network-level content blocking, next-generation networks, and walled gardens, in fact, including national-level walled gardens, are all being implemented and or proposed as solutions to emerging issues. Bad actors are finding ways to exploit the Internet infrastructure and to take advantage of the relatively low-cost economics of the Internet to make profit in ways that weren't conceived when the Internet was a relatively small network. Many of these issues have generated political fervor, intergovernmental attention, with governmental motivations ranging from national economics to international political positioning. So indeed, it is becoming ever more politicized, to Paul's point. Uh, there's interest in security and unwanted traffic issues with a broad range of stakeholders, including commercial interests, governments, end users, and certainly the internet technical community. Many of the key <coughs> principles that drove our engagement in DNS issues and many of the key principles that actually drove the development of the Internet itself, we believe should continue to drive our work as we address issues emerging in these new areas. In addition to some of the principles I mentioned a few moments ago, some of the additional ones is that it's necessary to ensure that policy goals and technical realities are not considered in isolation from each other. That solutions to Internet issues, including the actions of governments and multi-stakeholder coordination bodies, should be efficient and only as broad as necessary in addressing internet challenges. And finally, that the internet technical community, as we've demonstrated in our participation leadership in internet issues to date, must remain an engaged key participant in the development of solutions to the internet challenges that face us today and in the future. So just a closing thought. The title of, of this session is The History and Future of the Internet. Um, and I'd like to point out that I think the past isn't dead but rather eliminates where we might proceed by continuing and advancing many of the lessons through the use of the collaborative processes that have actually allowed the internet to escape the laboratory and become part of our everyday world. Thank you. Thank you.